Uh, okay, welcome everyone for this uh, Sahaja Yoga 10 weeks course. Uh, we're very happy that so many <clears throat> signed up for this course. And uh, I'm sure that we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, but we're also going to learn many, many new things. Of course, uh, the meditation is the most important of it, but uh, you will learn so many new things here. Uh, for today's course, I'm just going to go through the structure so it's a little easier for you to follow it. <clears throat> I will start with the introduction to Sahaja Yoga, to the, um, what we call the subtle system. After that, we'll do a meditation. I will guide you through a meditation. And after that, <clears throat> we're going to watch a video where Sri Mataji, it's our founder, is the lady on the photo behind me here. Uh, she will talk a little about uh, the subtle system. And after that, we're going to do uh, another small meditation. And uh, we're going to finish off with some feedbacks from you and uh, if you have questions. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> our founder, Sri Mataji Nirmala Devi, is the lady on the photo behind me. She has taught us everything that we know about Sahaja Yoga. She has been traveling the whole world to spread this gift to humanity because it's truly a gift. Uh, it can transform your lives and those of you that have the patience, uh, they will really understand what, what we are saying. Uh, Sri Mataji, she traveled the whole world uh, <clears throat> and gave this knowledge to everyone that uh, were, was interested, free of charge always, and Sahaja Yoga is always free of charge, because we believe like you have a candle and one candle is enlightened another candle and it moves on like this. Uh, the goal of Sahaja Yoga is to become our own masters, to gain full self-knowledge. And that is a, gr a gradual process. So uh, if we start with the word Sahaja Yoga, can we also please get uh, the subtle system? It's easier to talk then. Uh, sa the word sahaj means born with and uh, spontaneous. When we say born with, <clears throat> within every human being at the base of the spine, can we make it a little bigger? Is it possible to make? Uh... Okay, very good. Maybe, okay, perfect, perfect. So uh, within every human being at the base of the spine, you can see here a small triangle. Uh, <clears throat> in English, this is called the sacrum bone. It's, it's not a coincidence that is called sacrum because they knew uh, from very, very long time back that it was something special with that bone. In that bone, we have an energy. Uh, the name of this energy in Sanskrit is an old in English language is Kundalini. Maybe you have heard the word before. It's in a form, you can see it's like a spiral, three and a half coils. Kund, kunda uh, means spiral. So this is a feminine energy. We actually refer to her as Mother Kundalini because she's dormant in uh, 
99.9% she's dormant. It means that she's sleeping. And the first thing we do when someone comes to Sahaja Yoga is actually uh, do an exercise, a meditation, which we're going to do later. And the purpose of it is to awaken this energy within us. <clears throat> because this is the seed. When this energy is awakened, she will start to ascend in your spine. Uh, you can see here we have three main channels. Is the blue channel on the left side. Is it possible to point it out, Libing? It's easy for them to follow, maybe. There we have it. Is the left channel. Uh, <clears throat> we can say that it's uh, uh, our past. So our feelings are connected to the left channel. With the energy that uh, resides there, we desire things. Okay, so it's running on the left side. All these channels are in the spine, so they don't look exactly like this. It's running on the left side, and then it goes up to this chakra here, and it crosses on the other side. And this blue side here, which we call the superego, it creates the superego. Uh, <clears throat> if we move over to the other side, to the yellow channel, there. This is the channel of action. This is also the future. So the blue channel is the past and the yellow is the future. So the energy is on the blue channel, desire, we desire, but to achieve what we desire, we have to use the energy of the right side, the, the channel of action to achieve what we desire. And if we follow the yellow channel, it goes up again here and it crosses over to the other side and creates the ego. Okay. So before Mother Kundalini is awakened, we use these two channels. And if we use one of these channels too much, if we use the blue one too much, then we start to live in the past. We start to be very lethargic, feel very sorry for ourselves, we're not good enough, all these kind of feelings it creates in the left channel. If the yellow channel becomes overactive, it blows up our ego. Then we believe that we are on top of the world, we are the only ones that can do things. We're better than others. So the superego and the ego are each other's opposite. Okay. Uh, so how should we avoid this trap? Because it doesn't matter if the ego is going too big or the superego, it's just illusions. It has nothing to do with reality. So uh, when the Kundalini is awakened, she starts to ascend in the central channel. So it's the channel of the present. Only in this channel we can grow spiritually. So then we can see the reality as it is. And this can only happen when the Kundalini is awakened. So we can, we can say that the Kundalini is the key to everything. When this seed starts to grow, then the more we meditate, the more we establish the middle channel, which uh, brings us to the present. So all the thoughts coming from the past or the future, they start slowly, slowly to dissolve and we become more and more in the present. 
And when we live in the present, we, we don't get all these feelings that we get scared of things, we get anxiety and all this. Because when you are in the present, uh, you are where you should be. Uh, okay, so uh, yoga. Yoga means union. So when the Kundalini has, can we go back please to the uh, Shali Chakra? So, so when the, when the Kundalini works its way up, she passes through uh, different energy centers. So there are seven of them. One is behind, uh, below the Kundalini and the rest are uh, above. So this is energy center, or we can also call them chakras. Probably you have heard about them. So these energies, uh, they are actually controlling all the internal organs in our body, our heart, our kidneys, our liver. So uh, when they go out of balance, we also start to develop all kinds of physical problems. So, <clears throat> but apart from that, they also have spiritual qualities. And we're going to go through them during this course. So you will learn what are the qualities in different chakras. But for now, what you need to know is that when the Kundalini, when she's awakened, she knows exactly what's wrong with us and she will go to the centers which needs to be balanced. So actually what the Kundalini is doing, she, she goes up in the chakras and work on them to take away all the blockages and all the problems that we have in the chakras. And then she brings them all the way up to the last chakra. So they go out, you could say that the problems, they go out from the head. And uh, a yoga means uh, union. So when the Kundalini has gone all the way to the last chakra on the top of the head, then we get what we call yoga, union. Union with what? It's the union with our individual Kundalini and the all pervading power. So this, uh, you can only get experience from that union when this uh, union happens. Before the Kundalini is awakened, you cannot get that. You can read about it in the books, but you cannot really understand what it means. So you cannot get the experience of it. And I hope today, at least some of you, if not all, will get that experience. <clears throat> I can also tell you very quickly that on the hands, you can see here, we have different colors on different parts, uh, like on the fingers, on parts of the hand. So in our hands, we have also our chakras. So they go by color. So if you take, for, for instance, the little finger here, the red one is connected to the heart chakra. And when the Kundalini is ascending, if you have any problem in one chakra, you can, you can feel it on your hands. You could say that the Kundalini is giving you feedback about the state of your subtle system. So Kundalini is telling you that there is a problem here, you need to clear it out. So this, you will learn it slowly, slowly. But it's good to know at least uh, what it is. Uh, okay. Uh, I think we we'll, are going to go directly on the meditation now. And <clears throat> I'm going to show you first. First, I'm going to show you and afterwards we do the actual meditation. We're going to use the right hand 
put on different parts of our body, on different chakras. So first we're going to put it on our heart. Here we're going to say an affirmation. I will say it loud and you repeat it silent within yourself. And then move back uh, uh, further down to the left side of the navel, upper part of the stomach. Again, I will say an affirmation, you repeat. Then further down on the lower part of the stomach, on the groan, on the left side. Again, I will say affirmation, you repeat. Back again to the left side, to the heart where we started. where the shoulder and the neck meet. And we're going to turn the head little to the right. Then we let the forehead fall into the palm. Then again into the palm, but tilt the head backwards. And finally, we're going to stretch the fingers as much as we can and put the palm on the top of the head. Here we're going to do a massage clockwise. Clockwise means like this, but we're going to massage the skull in small circles. And we can push quite hard, seven of them. You don't need to count. It doesn't matter if it's five or six, don't go into a mental state, but uh, around seven. Okay, <clears throat> so <clears throat> find a nice posture. If you sit on the floor, it's good. If you sit on a chair, it's also good. Whatever is more com uh, comfortable for you. So we can start to close the eyes. So when we do meditation, it's very important that we pull the attention within ourselves. And one trick to do it is to focus on your breathing. So you breathe in through the nose, and out through the mouth. Let's do this, this for half a minute. <clears throat> Just focus on the breathing. The breathing looks after itself. <clears throat> we don't have to do anything. Just try to relax and just watch, watch. Now, when we do this exercise, everything has to be effortless. Don't get into a mental state, be completely effortless. Now we can put the hand on our heart. <clears throat> If you need to watch where I put the hands, so open your eyes. The first question is, who am I, Mother Kundalini? So we can ask that a few times. 
Who am I, Mother Kundalini? Mother Kundalini knows exactly who we are. Who am I, Mother Kundalini? And go down to the navel, left side. <clears throat> Here we ask, am I my own master or teacher, Madhi Kundalini? Can ask it many times. <clears throat> am I my own master, Madhi Kundalini? Can go further down. Here we're going to ask Madhi Kundalini to give us pure knowledge. So we can ask from our heart, please Madhi Kundalini, give me pure knowledge. This is a very special kind of knowledge. It's not something we learn through the books. It's something that we feel on our central nervous system. We can go back <clears throat> to the left side of the navel. Now we are just going to confirm that we are our own master. So we say with full confidence, Madhi Kundalini, I am my own master. I am my own teacher. And we can go to the heart where we started. Remember, <clears throat> we asked, who are we? Who am my mother Kundalini? And the answer to that question is that we are the spirit. We should not identify with our feelings, with our thoughts, with our intellect, and not even this body. So our true essence is that we are the spirit. It's completely detached from everything. So we can say, Madhi Kundalini, I am the spirit. I'm not my feelings. I'm not my thoughts. I'm not my intellect. 
and I'm not even this body. I am the spirit. Now we can go to the shoulder and the neck, <clears throat> turn the head a little to the right. In this chakra, we get problems when we feel guilt, then this chakra catches. So in order to strengthen this chakra, we say, Madhe Kundalini, I'm not guilty at all. And we can say it many times. I am not guilty at all, Madhi Kundalini. Guilt is very bad for us. It doesn't help us in any way. It just destroys us. So, if you do something that is bad, just make sure you don't do it again and forget about it. I'm not guilty at all. And go to the forehead. Let the forehead fall into the palm. At this point, the left and the right channel cross. And it's particularly difficult for the Kundalini to pass through here. The thoughts are coming from the past and from the future. And we have we want to go beyond the thoughts so the kundalini has to pierce through here so we can go into the silence the only way we can do it is to be forgiving so we can say from our heart mother kundalini i forgive everyone i forgive everything and I also forgive myself. Say it a few times from your heart. And it's general forgiveness. Don't think about the person that has been mean to you. We forgive in general. I forgive. I forgive, I forgive. I forgive everyone and I also forgive myself. It's such a relief to just forgive and move on. And if you don't forgive, you're only hurting yourself. So it's for your own sake you forgive. Doesn't mean that you forget, but you forgive. And go to the back side of the head, tilt the head, little back words. Here we're going to ask forgiveness from Mother Kundalini. 
for all the wrongdoings we have done against our spirit, knowingly or unknowingly. So we can say, Mother Kundalini, please forgive me all my mistakes, those I know and those I don't. Please forgive all my mistakes, Mother Kundalini. Can take, take down the hand, shake it little if you need before we do the last exercise. So now we're going to stretch the fingers in the right hand, <clears throat> put the palm on the top of the head. Here we're going to do the massage clockwise like this. And we're going to do seven circles. Like I said before, you don't need to count them. And every, every time you do one of these circles, you say, Mother Kundalini, please give me my self-realization. Mother Kundalini, please give me my self-realization. And ask from your heart. So you can do it in your own, own rhythm. Mother Kundalini, please give me my self-realization. Seven circles and you're asking for your self-realization seven times. When you're ready, you put your hands on your legs, palms pointing upwards like this. And we can stay with the attention on the top of the head. Just put it there effortlessly. Everything we do here is without effort. And just watch, we're going to put some music and we can try to meditate now. Just relax and watch.
Check the state you are in now. Do you still have thoughts coming, going? Put little attention on your hands. Can you feel some sensations on your hand? Maybe a cool wind, heat, or some tingling in some fingers. If you feel something, you can remember which finger or which part of the hand. Because the Kundalini is giving you feedback now. She's telling you, you have something here. We, we can continue to sit in this state and we're going to watch a little video, it's six minutes. All the heavy things all go down. But the Kundalini rises higher and higher and higher because it is like fire. Fire never burns down, it always burns up. She looks also like fire. And she has the capacity of fire. The fire has a capacity to purify and to burn off whatever can be burned. It purifies the thing which it cannot burn and burns off the thing which are inflammable, which can be burned. So the quality of fire that exists in the Kundalini burns off whatever is useful. Like in our house, we find all the useless things. We take them in the garden and burn them. One for all their things. So when the Kundalini rises, she also burns up all useless things. All your useless desires, your useless ideas of action, all sorts of useless accumulation of feelings and uh, egos and every sort of a nonsensical thing that is in between. Everything is burnt on the fire because they can be burnt. They are not eternal by nature. They are not eternal. They are temporarily there. All that is temporary, she burns. And that's how she enlightens the spirit because spirit cannot be burnt. But this burning is so beautiful that it burns off all that is bad, stagnating, all that is polluting, all that is a disease, and cools down the thing. It is very interesting to see how this power of fire becomes a cool breeze. So Kundalini within us expedites the living process within us of our evolution. So the power of Kundalini is to purify. She purifies us like fire. She doesn't purify us like water. Surprise. She doesn't purify us like water. Now water, what does the water do? Water never burns off it. But it dissolves it. It can take in something within itself. It can contain some of the dirt within itself, 
Supposing you put a color in the water heater, hmm. the Kundalini does not assume the color. She burns. Do you follow my point? So if you have anything wrong with you, she'll burn it off, but she'll not absorb, she's pure. She cannot absorb those things into her that will pollute her. She cannot be polluted. This quality of fire, say for example if you put fire, gold in fire, silver in fire, you can purify it. The pure form comes. That's how you know. But if you put gold and fire in water, nothing will happen. At the most you can wash them from outside. But in and out you cannot do. So outwardly you can do this other thing. But with Kundalini you do in and out. The face also looks beautiful, as if some glazing has taken place. A new bright face. It's not sallow, neither it is horribly smurry, nor is it pale and ugly looking. But it becomes radiant, radiant. That's what Udalini is. Now take the hand, put it on top of the head. Let's keep it there for a little short while. Take it down again. And we can keep the attention on the top of the head. can pray to Mother Kundalini, please remove all my thoughts, Mother Kundalini. Please make me thoughtless. Please give me the silence, Mother Kundalini. Allow us to go beyond the mind, into the silence. If you can feel a cool breeze on your hands or above your head, it's fine. If you feel heat, it's also fine. If you feel heat, it means that the Kundalini is working on something in your subtle system. If there is no blockages, then Kundalini can come out like a cool breeze. You become relaxed and still.
it's our thought that creates all our problems. We can silence them, then we are fine. It's important to know that we don't do anything when the Kundalini is ascending in our spine. Then this state of meditation happens. The best we can do is just to be an observer and let Mother Kundalini do all the work. Take a step backwards and just watch. Keep little attention on your hands about these sensations which I told you about earlier. Because all this is how Mother Kundalini is communicating with you and tells you exactly what you need to do. So we're going to finish this meditation. <clears throat> uh, Ila, would you like to show them this exercise? Yes. So um, when we are at home, how do we meditate? So I'm going to tell you about that. So um, like in the chart, we saw that there is a left channel which goes up here and creates super ego. And then there is a right channel which goes up and creates ego. It crosses in a way. But when the Kundalini rises, she opens up that cross and creates a space and it rises above and stays here. That's how she makes you thoughtless. She creates a space between your ego and superego, which are attacking your uh, mind with thoughts. So how do we balance our left channel? So at home, you can sit comfortably on the chair or on the floor, however you want. But when we are clearing our left channel, we are always keeping that hand. So the left hand would be on our palm, would be on our lap, rested. And the right hand will be kept towards the earth or towards the floor where you are sitting. And we meditate like that for a few minutes, keeping our attention on the left hand. Because we want our left channel to get lighter get clearer with time so we meditate by keeping our left hand and right hand on the floor why we do that because we now that you some of you can feel the tingling some of you can feel something right now and those who 
cannot feel anything right now, don't worry. But you, you need to meditate every day so that you can feel the Kundalini. But it is still working within you after today. So we use the Mother Earth, the element of Mother Earth, to clear our left channel. So we just say, Mother Kundalini, please clear our left channel and put all the imbalances or heaviness, whatever comes from the past or my, if I'm emotionally imbalanced or emotionally heavy, please put all that into the Mother Earth. So that's how you clear out your left channel. But if you are thinking a lot, if you are overly active, you cannot sleep at night because you have lots of thoughts. That means that your right, cha right channel is heavy more. It's out of, out of balance. So what we do is that we know that, okay, right channel is heavy, right? I'm right more on the right side. So I have to put my attention on the right hand. And we keep the left hand. We use the other hand to you know, take all the imbalances away from our body. So the left hand will be like this because now we are using the ether and ether clears the ego very much. And when you meditate, little by little every day, you can actually feel uh, your right hand or your right channel is getting lighter when you do this. And something out of your hand is going away, but it will happen with time. So be patient. So this is how you just pray to Mother Kundalini, please balance my right channel, that's it. Don't have to remember anything uh, if you, just don't have to think about too much. Just say, Mother, please clear my right channel. That's it. And you put attention on your right hand. But before doing this exercise, which is clearing your left channel, clearing your right channel, and then finally putting both your hands like this and meditating, you can put your attention on both hands or on top of your head. and do this for five minutes and that's it. But before we do these three exercises, we raise our Kundalini. So whenever you are meditating in the morning for five minutes, sit on the floor and you have to raise the Kundalini. And how do we do that? So we know that we have seven chakras or seven centers. So we use our left hand like this. We rest it like this. So this goes up like this through all the seven centers. And we use the right hand and it goes inwards, up, outwards. Inwards, up, outwards. And this is how we are raising. We are raising the Kundalini. So one, Two, and how do you remember how many circles are there? There are seven circles like this because we have seven chakras. So this is what we do when we raise the Kundalini. We raise her through all the seven centers like this. And then we make one knot. It's like an imaginary knot, but we make one knot and this is called Bandhan. It's like tying yourself, your attention over here. So one knot. Then we do the similar thing second time. And then we make two knots. Then the third time, again, seven times, circulating your hand seven times because we have seven chakras and then the third knot. Why three times? Because we have three channels. So seven times this and three knots because we have three, three channels. So center channel, left channel, right channel. 
And then uh, don't worry if you don't remember everything. We will send you materials how to do it at home. So then we take from the left side, we raise our hand like this. It goes above your head and comes down. And then it goes back from your head to the left side. This is how we are balancing the, le the left and right channel and also putting a aura around ourselves like a protection or aura. So again, this would be seven times. So two, three. So one is completing like this. So first it goes like this from top of your head to the right, from right to left, this is one uh, cycle. So again, six more times. Four, five, six, seven, and that's it. So first we raise our Kundalini. Again, it goes seven times. So we are raised, so what we are doing is that we are raising the kundalini through our seven centers. So where are our seven centers? So the first center is, a, is the root chakra, which is at the base of the spine. So the first will be like you go from the lower abdomen first. And then the second is here, third is here, fourth is here, fifth is here, sixth is here, and finally seventh. So we are raising our kundalini through all these seven centers and making a knot, tying our attention on top of our head three times because, and we make three knots because we have three channels. And then finally, we are creating an aura around us seven times. So this is something that you have to do before and after meditating. So first you do this exercise, then you balance your left channel, your right channel, and finally center. And then you again take a bandhan or raise your kundalini. And that's it. So this will take like five to six minutes every day in the morning. And don't worry if you don't remember everything right now. The videos and information will be shared with you so that you can follow at home. You can follow these exercises and meditate. Uh, in the morning and in the evening. So two times a day, you can find a quiet place for five minutes, day and night. So if you have any questions or you would like to give us some feedback, if you have felt anything, please tell us. And now we can uh, have a discussion and your questions. So now you should be able to unmute yourself. Uh, thanks, Lila. Um, actually, um, what Ila just explained, um, we would also like you to uh, take it in to your home as your homework. <laughs> uh, I don't know if Ila wants to say a few words just about it, how it works. Uh, yeah, so of course we will give you some homework <laughs> for this session and the homework is that you know how to raise your kundalini. So when we are sharing some information with you, and that's the reason we want you to share your email IDs with us so that we can send you this information to you. So, um, so we want you to know how to raise your kundalini and make a bandhan and also clear your left and right channel. So this is like a homework. And next week we will discuss how you have felt after doing this for one week. So one week when you practice this, raising Kundalini and meditating every day, we will know how you have felt, what are your questions, and we can have like little discussion next week, next Monday at the same time. Okay, wonderful, Ila. So if I understand, Correctly, this week our homework is to raise Kundalini and give ourselves bandhan every day. Try to meditate, and yeah. in our meditation.